Hello, this is Nate, your host and partner on this journey, and welcome to Outcome Becomes Income. The goal of this channel is to create an all-inclusive community to build long-term wealth via the stock market. In any 20-year period, the stock market has never lost money and it has outpaced inflation. The barrier to entry has never been lower. Many brokerages no longer charge commissions to buy and sell stock. And with the addition of fractional shares, we can invest with as little as $1. There has never been more options available for us to invest in the market and become part owners of publicly traded companies. With some form of income, a brokerage account, time and patience, we can invest in a sound financial future together. Please join me as outcome becomes income. Hi, this is Nate with Outcome Becomes Income. Today, I want to talk a little bit about an article I came across on Forbes. It was written by Jonathan Dash, and it's entitled, How Investors Are Costing Themselves Money. I'll leave a link to the article in the show notes if you're interested. And uh, it talks a little bit about Peter Lynch. He was the famed investor of the Fidelity Magellan Fund. And he ran that fund from 1977 to 1990. And while he managed the Magellan Fund, it averaged an amazing an annual return of 29%. I did a Google search to find a website. There's a calculator where you can calculate the returns of the S&P 500 with dividends reinvested. So I did a calculation of the S&P over that same uh, time period. Also leave a uh, link to the uh, website I use with the calculator. It's a pretty cool tool, tool if you're uh, interested in. So to put this uh, in context, the S&P 500 over that same time period averaged an annualized return of only 9.55%. And again, the Magellan Fund did 29%. So that's amazing outperformance. And we're talking an outperformance of 3X over, over the broad market per year. I mean, a $10,000 investment at the start of uh, Peter Lynch's tenure would have been worth $274,000 by the time he stopped managing the fund. I mean, all you had to do was put money in, sit back, and go along for the ride while Lynch was uh, managing that fund. But uh, as the article says, that's, that's not what happened. According to Fidelity Investments, they did a study and they found that the average investor who put money in the Magellan Fund during the time that Peter Lynch managed it actually lost money. They had negative returns. So that's really the point of uh, the article. How, how does this happen? How do investors lose money? And the simple answer, it's rooted in psychology and more specifically, our behavioral challenges, and especially when it comes to money management. The article also references a, a study by Dalbar, and they did this in uh, 2021, and it was regarding investors' behaviors. And the study found that the average equity fund investor unperformed the S&P 500 by nearly 1.5% per year over the last 20 years. And this is the behavior of investors, and it's this behavior at the study traces right back to Again, why the average investor lost money in the Magellan Fund during uh, Peter Lynch's uh, tenure. I didn't get that 29% annualized return. In fact, they did far worse and they had negative returns. So many times underperformance is just a result of poor investment decisions. As investors, we should have a well-conceived investment plan and the conviction to stick with it. And that's where we can let the magic of compound work happen. Over time, it will just continue to build. But often, uh, we get in our own way, and we tend to allow our emotions to get involved, and those emotions dictate our decisions and lead to poor decisions. Instead of focusing on our objectives, which is uh, was to invest in the Magellan Fund and just let Peter Lynch do all the heavy lifting, sit back and wait, and let the investment grow over many years, investors had a tendency to follow the herd. When the market went down and when it went down steeply, they would panic and they would sell their shares of that Magellan fund. And then as the overall stock market started to recover, of course, the Magellan fund would also recover as well and they would buy back in. 
But it's even worse because a lot of times when they were buying back in, they would wait until the Magellan Fund made an all-time new high, and that's when they would buy back in. So investors were chasing performance, and they were trying to time the market. And trying to time the market, this is a fool's errand. Thinking you can predict which direction the market is going to go, it just it doesn't happen. And all these investors were doing was buying high and selling low. And this is the exact opposite of what the goal of investing is. We want to buy low and sell high. And these investors in the Magellan Fund showed how these investing behaviors are, are just filled with risk and they lead to absolutely pitiful returns. But it it's not just the Magellan Fund. I mean, as the Dalbar study showed, the average investor today is still makes these same mistakes. They buy high and they sell low. But the good news is the silver lining, lining here is that we can learn from these mistakes. We could do a few things. I mean, first and foremost, we should know why we're investing. We should also have a good thesis of what we're investing in and really understand our time horizon and know that we're in this for the long term and that the market will fluctuate over time. I mean, on any given day, there's a 50-50 chance that the market's going to go up or down. But we buy quality funds or individual companies, and we continue to dollar cost average, whatever we can afford, and put that in on a set schedule, and know that we are holding for multiple decades. And we're not going to be scared out as the market fluctuates up and down. We're going to put more money in when it's down. We'll put money in when it's up. We're never going to buy at the bottom. We're never going to buy at the absolute top, but we continue to do that. And there's a 100% chance that over any 20-year period or longer, that we will have positive returns and we will continue to build wealth and we will be on our way to a sound financial future. Again, this is Nate. That's all I have for today. And thank you for listening. I'll You're talk to you soon. on YouTube, please like and subscribe. If you're listening on a platform like Spotify, Apple, or Google, please leave a rating and review. This will help spread the word and get our message out there. And if there's anyone that you think that can benefit from this content, please share. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or just like to drop me a line, please feel free to do so. All feedback is welcome, and I love hearing from listeners. You can follow me on Twitter, at Becomes Income. Drop me a line at email, outcomebecomesincome at gmail.com. And see what pictures I'm posting on Instagram and TikTok at Outcome Becomes Income. This is Nate, and until next time, thank you for being a part of Outcome Becomes Income.